It is the duty of the free man to resist tyranny at every turn. Every man will either watch his freedom stripped away or take action to protect what he loves. Introducing the A3, the newest revolutionary body armor from Armored Republic. The A3 is the new standard for lightweight multi-hit body armor. A3 plates are incredibly light at 4.6 pounds. The patented design captures fragmentation while remaining multi-hit capable. The A3 will stop up to M80 ball, yet comes in at only 0.7 inches thick. The A3 is the thinnest NIJ.06 compliant or certified composite standalone plate that includes the drop test. The A3 is the first of its kind, patent pending, that combines an alloy strike face with polyethylene backing, revolutionizing body armor technology by providing strength and durability while remaining sleek and maneuverable. The A3 is the new standard in lightweight body armor. The fight against tyranny just got stronger. Hey y'all, welcome to Cross Politic on the Five Laugh Fees Network. Pastor Toby Chuck Knox, I'm the Water Boy. We're gonna we're actually gonna pick up the topic of illegal immigration and chaos and power and all that stuff. But you can't talk about something heavy like this without getting some cigars from from some friends. So what? So hang on, hang on. This is nice. I I wasn't giving mine away. I saw the boxes downstairs. Uh, I'm like, uh, yeah, Knox already got into them. Yeah, so yeah. our boys over sixty eighty nine, uh -huh. they're actually becoming corporate partners Ooh. with Cross Politic. Mm, mm, okay. Wow! Mm. Wow! Well, what do you? What this do you, is delicious. What, you, what do this you got? Is, this is delicious. And then, and then, and then Toby, don't worry. Of don't worry, they got Spurgeon you. Spurgeon cigars. Uh huh. Delicious. Oh my Spurgeon goodness! Cigars. And so Whoa. there's some Calvin's. You know, we too. we had teetotalers up in here. Hey. You know what I'm saying? You know, I hey. love smoking you Baptist. Wow. Here you go. Ah, wow. Cigars hey. and a t-shirt hey. there. Uh, this this t-shirt. I think this is um. Yeah, oh, this, this is. This I, is Baptist fighting tranny culture right here. This, <laughs> just, I love just, it. Just for the record, I love it. I, I got in and already already smoked one, but they're they're gonna be a corporate this partners for this for this year. And so you go to sixteen eighty nine dot com, okay. uh, sixteen eighty nine cigars dot yeah. com. The, the yeah. letter sixteen eighty nine yeah. uh, cigars dot com. Love what these guys are doing, and they're actually going to be expanding and doing a lot more with uh, with I've, their labels. I, I, and actually, I've come here to smoke cigars and preach the gospel. This is the same rap <laughs> that I'm comes from all basically out of cigars. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. <laughs> well, um, that's a that's a funny shirt. Yeah. Um, and and basically, it's the same rap that comes from Drew Estate. So these are nice. These premium. are some of the best cigars. They're, they're pretty legit. Really? I'm not going to lie. These are some of the. You, you've I, had one already. Oh, I've had a couple. Oh my. And yeah, yeah. These and are we get we gave some. Marcus Pittman brought some for us. Yes. Um, and gave and us who's happening to be in studio today? So, yeah. yeah on, 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 I just wonder why there's not more Presbyterians. But they got in Maduro. They got the uh, the, their <laughs> Connecticut. Their Connecticut blend uh, like, got rated a 91. I think. I think that's the number he gave me. So they've been scoring high. And um. Okay. I mean, I I dipped into. To my cigar on on Saturday too. No, I'm telling you, a, man, it was Sunday. Excuse me, it's Sunday. one of the best smokes I've had. It's a, it's wow. a great, Seriously. great smoke. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just a reminder: the Christchurch Missions Conference is coming up March eighth and 9th. Uh You want to just search Christchurch Missions Conference? It comes up. I think there's a. It's it's a, it's Christkirk.com slash missions dash twenty twenty four. Man, we, we aren't helping. We're, we aren't helping. We're making we're people work for it. Yeah. You um, got to want to be here. Um, but uh, we're doing <laughs> uh, four uh, missionary biographies. Uh, Joe Rigney, uh, Jared Longshore, Pastor Wilson, and myself will be giving talks. Uh, come hang out with us. Please do register uh, because seating often fills yeah. up. And then... You'll be showing up, and there won't be. I hope Joe there. does it on the most empathetic missionary. That was. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure that's his plan. Yeah, uh, William Carey. That's that's Joe yeah. Rigney's. <laughs> Are you thinking differently about your family's finances and resources while others worry about surviving to the next paycheck? The hand of the diligent will rule, while the slothful will be put to forced labor. Mm. Train your mindset to see where God is moving, where to invest and build, so you can create, protect, and pass on wealth. What's your plan to use your economic power? Joe Garisi with Backwards Planning Financial coaches his clients to make this kind of impact on their world for generations by integrating investments, debt, insurance, tax efficient strategies, and legacy planning. So go to backwardsplanningfinancial.nm.com. That's backwards. 
planningfinancial.nm.com to connect with Joe today. And Joe's been in business for a while. He's been he's been great to uh, um, bring on board and yeah. been great to get to know him. He's does he have any of these of, cigars out of Florida? I, Just I'm, one. We should. I'm sure. I'm sure he does. We should get some. Yeah. He's a he's a he's, <laughs> he's a G. Working with money. He's a G. Joe's a G. Um, all right, so uh, we want to do this show kind of on all the immigration uh, politics America, that's, what's that's wrong been going with you on. People? Mm. Um, and and I'm, I'm a, just kind of to put some context in before we kind of get into some of the videos that I want to show you guys. Um, first, when um, Biden, uh, Trump signed an executive order. And if you guys remember, executive order doesn't make law. It, it basically tells agencies, hey, I need you to do this now. Um, it works within the law. That's what it should. It's, it's supposed to apply law that exists. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. And so, and, 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 and it's basically it's an order to an agency that has authority to do X under the law. Right. And so, uh, Trump signed an executive order in um, under his administration uh, that um, basically ordered the sixteen billion dollar wall, and then also tightened up um, uh, and and made stricter. Um, uh, uh, cages? No, no, that was, that was Obama. Remember, that was Obama. <laughs> the children in cages was Obama. Um, and, and, and made a stricter policies in exporting illegal, illegal immigrants out of the country. Okay. So that was under that was under Trump. Biden, day one of office, um, un, uh, signed an executive order undoing that executive order. Repealing it. So repealing it. It eliminated um, the money towards the wall. It... It um it it um uh, eliminated the expansion of the wall. Reverted um, back to policy before that. Loosen, Trump loosened up the policies yeah. for coming over the border. All that okay. stuff. Okay. All right. That's that. All right. And on then, day one, that was day one. Okay. Yeah, day one. Okay. Well, uh, and so what was hilarious about all this is I was trying to find okay, um, give me year over year immigration illegal immigration numbers um from I didn't care you know twenty. 20 to 2000 to 2024. That's what I wanted to sure. see. Yeah. Um, but this is all I could find was this chart where it took us up to 2018. And you'll see in 2018, uh, Trump's numbers. Yeah, this is it. Thank you. Um, illegal border crossings have been declining for about two decades. Okay. You can see the kind of the height. It's kind of like the, the uh, Clinton Bush baton there. Wow. Um, and then you can see it kind of declining since. Now, under the, the numbers I found in the Trump administration, there's basically about uh, about two million illegal crossings under the Trump administration. So that was his four years. I see. So like half a million. Well, yeah, maybe about half a million each year. Maybe going yeah, up. Yeah, a little bit. yeah, yeah okay. maybe going up. So it's about, that's, that's all we got. It's about two, two million. And again, wow. like yeah. all these numbers, you're, you're kind of trying to want. Do I trust them? Are they using? Are they making a political you know adjustment on the numbers? Every administration plays with the numbers especially it still on, ain't good i don't care what like kind on, of adjustments on G- you're making gdp it. changes under administrations yeah. unemployment numbers yeah. change under administrations how right. they calculate it right so anyway uh so this is uh trump and then biden's um the illegal, illegal immigration crossing the border under biden is on the low side we found was about seven million and on the high side was up to 11 million yeah um and i know ben shapiro uses i think that that 11 million number yeah and so that is not even under a completed a Biden administration. His administration is not over. Right. So we're we're start. So it's about. Like, I mean, if you take the upper number, I mean, that's I, I, the numbers I found from USA Today. Um, we're we're talking about like two and a half, maybe his first year, maybe three his second year. But yeah. I mean, it, it's wow. it seems to be rising. Maybe yeah. four million l- last year. I don't know, but yeah. it's like uh, to in order to get to ten million, it's like how many is that a a, right. a year? Right. Um, that's, I mean, if, if we could extend the bars out, yeah. the lines would be jumping like way over Clinton. Yeah. That's right. Cause that, cause that, I mean, that's 1.5 million in, in one year it's yeah. 1.5 million and, right. and everybody was saying it was un, out of control. Uh-huh. I mean, several years are about 1.5 million, uh-huh. but if we're saying he's hitting 3 million, maybe 4 million yep. in a year, that's, that's yep. the line. I can't, it's, it, it's it, it off goes the off TV. the chart. It's it off, goes off the TV. TV. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And so um, there really is a problem there. And then Biden uh, releases this statement yesterday. In fact, I, I just want to play uh, the video of him summarizing this statement uh, from Biden. Executive authority, or is there more you can do? Absolutely. It's not all I can do. Give me the power. I've asked for the very day I got it off. Give me the border control. Give me the people. Give me the people to judge. Give me the people who can stop this and make it work less. So basically, give, what, me, give, the power, me, the give power. me the power. Kind of, kind of reminds me of the uh, the emperor on Star Wars. <laughs> give me the power, <laughs> Luke. 
Um, hmm, and so here's so his statement. So he's basically you know you wor- gotta, working with reporters there, and he's saying, "Hey, I just need more power." But you know, what's I'm driving this strong. You got to remember what's saying. driving this is Texas is driving this, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is all in response to what's going down there with Abbott right now, right? So and he's responding, and you know, yeah, he's but is this true? He says, "On the day I came into office, I've been asking for the power." As he eliminates executive order power under Trump, as he deletes the power he had under Trump, what that Trump was doing, right? You know, and so I, I what, don't doubt since day one that Biden's been asking for more power. Right. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No one's arguing. Yeah, about that, right? I agree. He has yeah. been arguing. Give me the power. Yeah. Give me the power. So he said, "This is a statement that he's basically summarizing right there." Right. Give me the power. He says, I need new emergency authority to shut down the border when it becomes overwhelmed. And then here's what he's asking for. This includes an additional 1,300 Border border Patrol agents, 375 immigration judges, 1,600 asylum officers, and over 100 cutting-edge inspection machines to help detect and stop fentanyl at our southern border. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, 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 wait. So uh, why do you play that one? Because this is... (laughs) Because you have your reasons. I want to know your reasons. This I want you to a, tell us. This is a lie. Yeah. Do you think that he's going to get this kind of, let's say, let's say for a second, we're like, okay. And we passed, because this is a bill, right? This is what he wants. He's trying to get in the beginning of this letter. What he's arguing for here is that since day one, I've been work or, or in the last two months, I've put together my team to go work with the Republicans and the Democrats to get together a bill to give me more power. What? He's already the president of the United States. He operates and functions under the executive order. Okay. And he has the authority to control the borders right now. He can do that. He doesn't need any more power whatsoever to do that. If this man is willing to blow, I I think he just put another $72 billion into removing uh, student loan debt. If he's willing to blow $136 billion already on student loan debt without a bill. Yeah. Without a bill, right, and 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 not and sort of in, defi- <laughs> in, in defiance of the Supreme <laughs> Court, <laughs> right? And, and then you're going to tell me that all he needs is a bill now to do right. what he's already supposed to be doing. He has authority to do. Well, he it, ain't nothing but a liar. He um and I mean, as far as I can remember, until this moment, uh, ha- hasn't haven't I mean, he's um, the press secretaries have been asked about illegal immigration. Um, for the last two and a half years. And they years. keep saying, oh, there's no problem. And there's, there's no problem. The only thing we've ever heard is there's no problem. Everything's yep. under control. Everything's fine. The Republicans are overreacting. Yeah. Uh, you know, cons- conservatives are racists. Yeah. They don't like any- anybody coming from a different country. Right. And then suddenly Biden's like, I'm trying to get this done, guys. Yeah. And it's the Republicans that won't work with me. Right. Right. No, I mean, that, this, that's the narrative. This, that's the narrative. This is a political football. Yeah. Speaker Johnson tweeted this out literally, um, I think, yesterday. Um, or on Tuesday of this week, and and he said, um, you actually have all these authorities at your disposal right now. You have the presidential authority to restrict entry. You have the yeah. expedited removal, Section 235. You have the discretionary detention authority, Section 236. You have the mandatory detention, uh, Section 236. So he has access to all these powers already right. to restrict illegal immigration. Right. Yeah. So with that said, um, uh for the, the the way the Democrats talk about illegal immigration now is is very different than how Clinton and Obama and Biden talked about it in the past. If you guys remember, Clinton actually was pretty um, seemed pretty concerned about illegal immigration. All Americans, not only in the states most heavily affected, but in every place in this country, are rightly disturbed by the large numbers of illegal aliens entering our country. The jobs they hold might otherwise be held by citizens or legal immigrants. The public service they use impose burdens on our taxpayers. That's why our administration has moved aggressively to secure our borders more, by hiring a record number of new border guards, by deporting twice as many criminal aliens as ever before, by cracking down on illegal hiring, by barring welfare benefits to illegal aliens. In the budget I will present to you, we will try to do more to speed the deportation of illegal aliens who are arrested for crimes, to better identify illegal aliens in the workplace as recommended by the commission headed by former Congresswoman Barbara Jordan. We are a nation of immigrants, but we are also a nation of laws. It is wrong and ultimately self-defeating for a nation of immigrants to permit the kind of abuse of our immigration laws we have seen in recent years, and we must do more to stop it. I don't like it. 
I don't like this clip. Okay. Why? Because he sounds like a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> and it means this is this is we this is the drift. Yeah. This, this is, the right? this is where Republicans are now. Right. Like, like my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Where, where <laughs> Bill Clinton was at. No, well, I mean, we we nom- we elected Bill Clinton two point and Trump. I, mean, I was I was gonna say Obama, but yeah. no, no. More radical. Truth to that. Trump Trump truth is, I mean, because you know you got, you got I don't <laughs> like that. <laughs> you I got, just don't and that's such a I love that. You got era. the infidelity. No, but but, yeah. but you got the but Clinton is saying that we've got a yeah. problem, and um and again if, if you know these are rough numbers but estimates are that uh, under Biden uh, we're, we're talking like triple the numbers per year yeah at least double the numbers per year yeah that, okay that Clinton was facing and you said this is how Democrats were talking about yeah so the, I'm not done I'm not done with okay. Clinton so this is Clinton and here's uh, Obama talking about immigration. That we all agree on the need to better secure the border and to punish employers who choose to hire illegal immigrants. Uh, you know, we are a generous and welcoming people here in the United States, but those who enter the country illegally and those who employ them disrespect the rule of law, uh, and they are showing disregard for those who are following the law. Uh, we simply cannot allow people to pour into the United States undetected undocumented, unchecked, and circumventing the line of people who are waiting patiently, diligently, and lawfully uh, to become immigrants in this country. Uh, mm. So, wait, there's more. So, now here's... <laughs> okay. here's We're going to be here Biden. all day. <laughs> here's Biden. So, that was when, when Obama was senator. Yep. So, um, oh, okay. 2006, okay. you know, something like that. Okay. Um, here's Biden. I believe this is in, yeah, 2008... As I think he's running for he's VP now or, 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 or for candidate yeah. uh, under o- Obama. Uh, right. That no great nation can be in a position where they can't control their borders. <laughs> it matters how you control your borders, not just for immigration, but it matters for drugs, terror, a whole range of other things. Here's the conclusion I come up with. And it's sort of in equal parts. We have to. We have to, and I had been arguing for, when I'm back in as my days as chairman of the Judiciary Committee and straight through in the, as the leader of the Foreign Relations Committee, I've been arguing for the need to put more protection at our borders, meaning that you have more border guards. This president, refusing to add the number of border guards, now said he has to send the, send the National Guard down. He, he vetoed. He, he was against adding the number of border guards. I only can suggest the reason he was is because he needed that money for his tax cuts that were unnecessary. I'm not being facetious. I'm being serious. Again, tell, show me what you value. So, <laughs> You're a lying dog faced pony soldier. <laughs> so, I'm gonna, uh, so, kind of the big E on the air chart. Here's a big statement that, um, and how I'm viewing this is that the Democrats are using this to um, you know, um, uh, increase chaos. And then they're using this uh, for more power. I mean, uh, Biden just explicitly admits that in his statement. He wants power. Um, he wants more power. Give me the power. And and this is your point earlier, or actually when we we're talking off offline, was basically this is just COVID. They learned from COVID how to get more power. Create, chaos. Create chaos. Yep. Create chaos. And then in, in the midst of chaos, ride in on the white horse mm-hmm. as the as the savior. And and then exactly. State. And then you see this and how. The individual states are responding to this illegal immigration. So we were uh, one of the questions we were kicking around is why is Texas kind of crying foul and you know rightly saying, hey, you know this is a problem. Arizona, it, we just had uh, Nick Cupper, right? Was, was yep. it Nick, Nick yeah. Cupper? Yep. Um, and and it's you know Arizona is unhappy with illegal immigration, but you hear nothing out of California. Yeah, yeah. And um, and because it's it's a it's a power play. And also an economic play. What's crazy is we we're just um, uh, kind of doing some research on the ground in California, and um, the uh, California is the seventh largest economy in the world, and they don't have the workforce to maintain that economy. Mm-hmm. And so they're more than happy to welcome illegal immigration, especially yeah. in the um, farm community. Yeah. And you remember, uh, Obama just said. We need to punish the employers that are hiring illegal immigrants. Right. Mm. He just said that. That was 2006, something like that. Yeah. And, and but in California, and Andy said you need to. Uh, what was it? Clinton said they're they're getting on our welfare system. They need to get off. Yeah. It's, it's hurting right. us. It's, right. 
it's it's not fair right. to those who are paying their taxes. Right. But in California, you can be an illegal immigrant and go in and get medical, you know, all these all these social benefits it's, as an illegal immigrant. It's illegal to ask if you're an illegal immigrant. If you get that's where I was going. If if an employer wants to hire you, you can't even ask if they're a legal immigrant. Right. They can give you a fake social security number. And and then you hire them. Right. You can't ask any questions. Three weeks later, you'll get in the mail that hey, this is not a, a, a so good legit. Accurate, so legit social security number. Yeah. So that illegal immigrant will just go get another social security number, and they'll run through the whole process again yeah. and again. Right. And so um, l- estimates um, of Ill- illegal immigration in the farming community working for farms is over fifty percent. Right. And and again, this is our on the ground research, and that's coming from. Californians don't have the work ethic to want to work on the farms. Mm. So there's Californians who can take those jobs. They don't want it, and the illegal immigrants want it. And so the farm but, community but needs seems, them. But it seems to me like it's 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 actually just not even enough people though. I don't think I don't think I don't think it's That's just I don't think it's just, I don't think it's just like don't want the jobs. I, don't, I think there's yeah. I, don't, I think even if all of them wanted the jobs, we they wouldn't have enough, and California's yeah, economy ca- yeah. California's economy would collapse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's why I think California's not him and hawing. They aren't him and hawing for one because the economic demand that they have for these jobs. And then I would say another Gavin Newsom's just not going to him and haw against Biden and well, his immigration. Well, you also, and, and then you also have, I mean, at least at least statistically, it appears that um, most of these folks coming in when um, the the um, the Democrat liberal socialism order is offering these people a bunch of programs and then says vote for Democrats. Right. So so in order to in order to hold a a, a democratic yeah. um, government in place in a uh, liberal progressive socialistic government in California. You buy them off. They're 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 well, getting bought. Yeah. Even if they didn't do that, they would win them anyway with the government schools. Yeah. <laughs> eventually. eventually. <laughs> they would, I yeah, mean, yeah. I think you're yeah. right. That's yeah. part of it. No, but yeah, they would the, never they, have to do that. They're kids. They 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 already know if they get them here they got them. Yeah, right. Because they got the government, and, and if schools. not them, their kids, their kids, yeah. exactly. Right. Why don't you, I'll go let you go ahead, and then uh, we, all right. I do got have, a question. Do you have a podcast, or are you thinking about starting one? No, oh, hey. Does your church have a podcast feed for sermons? Then dropwave.io is for you. You know, when you first asked me to do this cross politic podcast, I think that's all I thought podcasts were were sermons. That you like yeah. shared online. I most like, of them, most like, Christian podcasts, like the old taping ministries. Yeah, and I was like, know, I we'll guess, I guess Gabe and I are gonna like talk, kind of like a sermon, and yeah. then <laughs> most Christian podcasts. That's all. They that's got. funny. Dropwave IO is for you. Cancel culture is like walking on a thin glass bridge over the Grand Canyon. Oh, really? Every step you take could get you killed. I mean, canceled. Yep. Since the beginning, CrossPolitik has been working on being anti-fragile, so no matter what happens, our content can still be delivered to your TV, to your podcast. The Waterboy and his friend Jeremy have been working. I know Jeremy. Yeah, we had dinner with him. Yeah. Have you been working on building? Have they been working on building a podcast hosting solution for rowdy platforms like CrossPolitik, so that you can be confident your podcast will never fall through that glass bridge? Dropwave offers seamless onboarding for shows that have been around for years to easy to use solutions for starting your own podcast. Dropwave will track all your shows downloads by city, state and country, and it offers network and enterprise packages for solutions like the Fight Laugh Feast Network. Free to speak, free to podcast, free to start your journey now at dropwave.io. That's dropwave.io. I O. Gabe, you said that earlier before we started the show, you said you didn't like the way that we were having this conversation. What did yeah. you mean by that? I, I don't even think I quite maybe fully um, understand, uh, uh, fully can, can, can articulate that. But part of the, what I can articulate is I don't like the way we're having this conversation. It's um, it, illegal immigrants are being used as a political baton in American politics right now. And you think we do have a problem, though? We do have we a border absolutely problem. have a problem. Yes. Yeah. Like so, I I don't. And, and Biden has made it a problem. And people are coming here illegally. And people and are coming they here shouldn't. illegally. And and yeah. there's bad actors in the illegal immigration. There's a fent- a fentanyl. You know, people are using this. What to, we're being told is all these drugs are coming across as part of this illegal. Yeah. Immigration, so bad guys are is, leveraging is, what we have yeah. not taken yeah. and managed well. But, yeah. but again, it's it's the it's the this is a classic play uh, of many governments. Um, mm. You allow or cause 
That's right. A real problem. Yeah. Yep. And then you run around the other side yeah. and you say, I will save you. I mean, this is a problem from Venezuela, you know, because yep. illegal immigrants coming from Venezuela, of course, Mexico. Those aren't, but uh, from what I understand, Mexicans are not the biggest illegal immigrants that are coming no, across. No. It, it depends it, on what time of day it is. It, yeah. <laughs> but, but there's a whole host of countries who are failing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. right. That this yeah. goes back to your multiple governments. Yeah. Like America is dealing with a cascade of country socialistic programs that don't work, and they're coming into a country that's going more and more into socialism. Yeah. Right. But right. do you think so? But so are you saying that we're not dealing with the humanity of the people who are coming over? Well, um, well, that's part of it too. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's a mess on every side, though. I mean, I don't know what you mean. I'm just, I'm just. Yeah. Thinking. I'm, I mean, I'm I think. Thinking. I mean, because because it is like a, one minute they're like the the narrative is. You don't, you know, you know these are political and religious refugees. Yeah. These are people that just want a chance at life. Right. A- and then the next minute, Biden runs around the other side and goes, just give me the power and I'll stop it. Right. And you're right. Like, yeah. like, which one is it? Like, which <laughs> yeah. one is it? It's like, yeah. you, like these illegals and like, they're just people. I kind of expect that if you don't know what a human being is, I don't think no. that you know how to treat no. one. No, this, Nor- goes, this goes back to lie, lie, lie. Yeah, yeah, lie, yeah. Lie, yeah. Lie. All you do is lie, <laughs> lie, lie, lie. That's right. Yeah. Lie, lie, lie. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, what is a male or female? What is a yeah? If you don't human, have those, yeah. you're, you're you're distorted. All you know. Yeah. All I think about when we talk about our insecure borders and we talk about the ability to not be able to protect them, and we have this influx of foreigners, and this is why pe- people, you guys have to have this conversation because. There is a, a a shifting and a change of the idea of America as a Christian nation. It's being shifted, and now the gas pedal is just being floored. Yeah. And part of what is helping that change the dynamic of the nation is there isn't a time to inculcate into this Christian atmosphere, right? They want to make sure there's no time for that. So they're to get bring yeah. as many people as possible yeah. to tilt the scale so that the scale oh, breaks. Oh, oh, you know though they they do have an enculturation program. Yes, it's just the it's not the, Christian one. It's the, it's the public. It's the public <laughs> right. schools. And and like back to you, your point earlier, like they are there. I mean, to the extent that they just go right into public schools. Yeah. Then they've got their their socialism training program. That's right. Um, but but thinking- we, we we better not make the mistake of thinking that we fix this problem just by getting that budget to get walls up. I think yeah, that's right, a f- right. I think that's a failure of of our conservative brothers and sisters, our Republican brothers and sisters and even some of my Christian nationalist brothers and sisters. I'm not saying that we should not be able to protect our borders. Yeah. Absolutely. But if you think you protect your borders, you're insane. You don't protect your borders. God, God protects right. your borders. That's right. And Israel was always told, if you don't fear the Lord, if you go chasing after other gods, if you go a whoring, you won't have protection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You won't have borders. You'll yeah. have your own. They will come. Look at Judges. The first part of Judges. The enemy was coming from outside, taking all of their fruitfulness. Uh-huh. All of their, they were hiding in the mountains yeah. because they were being overrun. Right. This is Israel. The people yeah. who came in there conquered the land. Right. And it, now they're being conquered because they have created a place for false idols and they've forgotten God. Right. And so the thing that needs to be fixed above all is right worship to the true God. Right. You know, and if if we don't repent here, I mean, there's a lot to go down. This is why, you know, you were talking about earlier, um, Pastor, like who at the end of the day, who can I trust? You can't trust the federal government. No, you can't trust federal government. You have to trust your local government. Mm -hmm. Your local government is a reflection of what's going on in your local and all your government is. But particularly what's happening in your local environment, what's going on in your home. Sin in our houses produces the type of idolatry that we see in our culture and in our nation that brings us borders uh, being overrun by uh, right. illegals in our borders. Right. And we don't have a process to bring them in. Right. You know, and so this is this is not <laughs> you, look, the Democrats are just using this. It just, it's our sin to God. Our idolatry to God is when in the cells of our enemies. That's right. Do you That's understand? Right. Me? Yep. <laughs> yeah. yep. Yeah, the, the, um, it, when you, it makes you, um, when you don't have God's blessing, ev- everything breaks down, and you don't, um, you don't have control. That's right. You, you don't have, and 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 that's where this is the sensation. What is the sensation? This is the sensation of free fall. This is the sensation yeah. of of, uh, and this is the chaos. And the, and what again? What the statists want to do is they like the feeling of state uh, of of chaos because then they will run in and they will say what you what we need to do is you need to vote us more power. 
That's it's right. what Biden said. Give yeah. me the power. That is what they're after. They like the chaos. They like everybody. I'm feeling, your king. I'm your king. I will <laughs> save you. And and this is the point that when we say worship, what we're saying is when you feel that sensation of chaos, where do you turn? That's right. That's because, exactly because right. It, if if and and uh, and you know if you, if you say. What we, what we have to do now in order to get this feeling of security is get a wall or more guns or vote in Trump or whatever the thing is. Right. It's like, no, you're all you're doing is looking to man. You think Trump's going to fix us? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this is a spiritual I mean, problem. I mean, you he, think Trump you know, is the solution? Um, but that's but that's but I think that's. Yeah. Thing is, so, so and I think, you know, we, our audience is is um, knows the liberals are insane. Yeah. yeah. But right. but the thing that I think we are concerned to do is make sure that we as conservative Bible believing Christians, right. um, we've got to think carefully about this and recognize that fear drives even good people to do stupid things. Yeah, of course, fear drives people to do to, to into the arms of people you don't actually want to be in, yeah. and mm. um, and there and can, there can be. Um, certainly strategic steps along the way where you might say, look, I think Trump's going to buy us a little more time than yeah, Biden's right. commies and, right. and fine. Yeah. Um, cast your vote. If as, you're repenting, as, you as, as you more time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, but remember, you know, this, the same guy who might build a wall and slow that down in one side might um, decide to do warp speed three. Oh, he wants power too. And, and he, yeah. And, and, and he thinks the solution is, uh, is, is man also, and um, and so you don't you you don't want to over you, you you've got to think like a Christian, think like a Christian. Don't don't react, don't respond. Um, just in the in your flesh, in fear. Um, I, I keep I keep telling um, I keep saying this, and I think it's something that maybe we just can keep keep emphasizing. But um, one of the things that struck me recently, the, the more um, I've, I've just um, looked at the judgments of God, is that. Um, God always brings his judgments with laser precision. We are under judgment. Yeah. And um and I was just looking I was just trying to remember the text but remember in uh in 1 Corinthians um uh, 13 uh sorry 14 when uh Paul is uh, uh uh sort of discouraging um the regular practice of speaking in tongues in right. church. Right. He says remember speaking in tongues is mostly a sign of judgment. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, mm. and and he quotes from Isaiah 28. Mm. Um, he's, and and, and right. he says he's and in Isaiah 28, it's it's a condemnation of their idol worship. Uh. And in Isaiah 28, it says you're going to start hearing all these foreign tongues in your city, and that's how you're going to know um, that your God isn't with you anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like the Tower of Babel. It's it's a little right. Tower of Babel yeah. happening. Yeah. Now, of course, at Pentecost, there's sort of a reversal going that's on right. because God's uh, the people are actually hearing in their own tongues right. the mighty works of God. Yep. Um, but but people were getting weird about it. They always have with speaking in tongues and being like, "Look, I got this magic gift where you can't understand." And Paul says that's a sign of judgment. That's not that's not yeah. a that's not a sign of, of God's blessing at all, right? But it, but it it really goes back to um, where do you find your safety? Um, where do you turn to for security? Um, and and recognize. But but point being, but even in Isaiah, over and over again, even as God's judgments fall, there's always a remnant. Always, and God knows His remnant, and that means what you want to do is um, remember uh, when the angel of death came through Egypt. The angel of death came through Goshen too. That's right. Come on now. But God. God is, Message. remember, God always, when he brings judgments, remembers the righteous. Always. This is what Abraham pleads with God before Sodom and Gomorrah and says, will you destroy the righteous of the wicked? And, and God says, no. And he says, how about 50? No. How about mm. 40? No. Mm. All the way down to 10. Turns out there weren't even 10. There was like three and a half, right? You know, Lot's wife kind of you know, gets halfway out of town. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but God preach, preach even got those three. Out, yeah, and just you know, just to keep it nice and weird. Remember the three that go out. Two of them are daughters who sleep with their dad. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, right. That's God's standard. Not, not discipled that well. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Like, like yeah. you know, they went to Andy Stanley's church. Mm. Oh. You know, like, like they, like yeah. they, you know, like. But God is Message. God is righteous, right? And He does not destroy the righteous with the wicked, right? And so that means you're safe, right? You're, even even with this siege, yeah, like so, that doesn't yeah. mean there's nothing for you to do. Right. But the, my point is, is you need to know you've got the blood over your door. 
That's right. Mm. That's right. When the angel of death Mm. comes through, when God's judgment is falling on this land, like massive falling. Yes. And part of it is this massive illegal um, invasion. Absolutely. It's part of God's judgment. As is the LGBT parades and as is the socialism, as is the fact that we are not free in so many ways. It's all the judgment of God. But you need to know that you have the blood over your door. That's right. You are safe. I was talking with and you it guys. works. I was talking with I think it was with you guys. I was talking to somebody recently, and I I said, you know, I mean, like we've got these, like you know, like part of the judgment of God is, you know, we've now got, um, you know, the DEI policies are making flying dangerous, mm-hmm. right, right, mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Right? right? Like that's part airplanes of, falling this apart. This is the part of the danger. This is part of the yeah. danger. Uh, like you rebel against God, you get stupid. Yeah. And airplanes are going to start falling out of the sky. Like yeah. doors are flying off, and you know, wings are not bolted down, and yeah. things like this, and. But the thing that I was thinking is, you know what? I'm sure that it's already happened, but it's going to happen more and more, that there are going to be planes that ought to crash, but don't because there are Christians on board. Yeah. 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 Right. right. Mm-hmm. That's how our God works. Yeah. You need to, we need to know, we need to be, have it fixed in our bones that God does not destroy the righteous with the wicked. Yeah. And so we don't need to be afraid. Right. Mm. We need to act, but not react. We need to be yeah. obedient, Amen. but we do not need to act in fear. We need to do what is right right now, yep. starting with the people right around you. Yep. Take care of your kids. Take care of your wife. Be faithful in church. Build a business. Love your neighbor. Yeah. Mm. Be generous with the poor. Yeah. But but do it in faith, trusting that there's blood over your door. You're safe. Yeah. Mm. And that's just you know reading through the Psalms of David. Right. I mean, Enemies all around him, and God is David's shield, and God and, and, is David's and fortress. And he says, and I'm going to lie down, and I'm going to go to sleep. Go to sleep. Mm. Yep. If you're single, get married. If you're married, have you some kids. And if you have kids, go baptize them. Until tomorrow, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go fight, laugh, and feast. This is Cross Politics. My name is Jamie Piles. I joined Samaritan in December of 1996. We were homeschooling our kids and we were already thinking outside the world's box, if you will. And I saw a little tiny classified ad about this new kind of idea I'd never heard of before. My first reaction was, that's the kind of thing that we would do, isn't it? And so I finally called the number, talked to them, and the more I asked them questions, the more I liked their answers. 